hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel if this is your first time joining me on this channel my name is delphine konda i do make videos about career lifestyle and non-profit tips part of building your career in my opinion is building your skills and one way to build your skills and develop yourself is through education and that's why on my channel i do talk a lot about scholarship opportunities because i believe that it is a way for us all to have the means to build our skills today i'm going to be doing another video of um, the chevening scholarship which is something that i've talked about a lot on this channel but first before we start i want to say a massive congratulations to all those who have been shortlisted for interviews for the chevening scholarship in whatever part of the world you are i want to say a big congratulations do not panic the interviews are really just a way for chevening scholarship officials to know if indeed or truly you are the one who wrote the application they just want to know i have put together a list of questions that i used when i was um, going for my chevening interview in 2016. so i have the questions in my notebook and i'm going to read them so basically all of these questions are going to come from your essay questions all the questions that you have written in your application phase about leadership networking career path course choice um, post um, study plans all of the questions are going to come from there but the thing is they may not ask you those questions word verbatim the same way that it was asked in your essay they might rephrase it a little bit so you just need to pay attention and remember that you have passed the initial application phase they just want to be sure um, that it is you who did it so let's dive straight into the video Typically, they will also start with questions like, tell us about yourself and why you are the best candidate for this scholarship. This is now your opportunity for you to brag, but don't brag about things that are not related to the scholarship, things that are not related to your application, things that are not related to your potential. Talk about your achievement, talk about yourself, your academic, you know, everything that you wrote about yourself this is the point for you to showcase yourself so don't bring elements that were not necessarily in your initial application don't introduce new element rather expand on the things that you wrote in your application the second one is why should we award you the chevening scholarship this is where you talk about why you are the best candidate you talk about your leadership skills you talk about your networking um, skills you give the numbers of people that you have been able to impact through your work you talk about your course choice and how you think that that course is going to help you to become an expert in your field and when you come back home you'll be able to contribute to the development of your country why did you choose chevening scholarship among all the other scholarships out there this is an opportunity for you to go to the chevening website which i'm going to leave somewhere on the screen of this video go to the website look at the history of chevening you know find the reasons why chevening for you is better than every other one know when chevening was founded know how many people have been um, impacted have received the chevening scholarship in the past look at people like prominent names of people that have been awarded the chevening scholarship and they studied and they came back and did amazing things. Look at politicians, look at leaders in your field, in your country. Look at people working with like maybe the World Bank and they are crediting their success to um, being achieving. And the next question is, in your opinion, what can you describe as your greatest achievement? It is the same thing like talking about your leadership skills. Just that's basically your leadership essay. And then, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Now, that's career plan. Talk about what you want to do in your career plan. What you wrote in your essay. Do not introduce new topics. What are the British values and what do they mean to you? I would advise that in this case, there are ways that you can go about it, about it to understand the British values. One way is to read about the Magna Carta. You can read about the Magna Carta to understand the British values or simply you can just go to the British um, 
High Commission website in your country and find out what the British um, High Commission in your country focuses on. What kind of topic? Is it um, finance? Is it agriculture? Is it human rights? Is it gender or women empowerment? You know, is it business? Look at what they are focusing on. Stalk their Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram. Look at what they are posting. That is how you get to know about their values. And then you now justify what they mean to you. Choose your area of expertise among all those values that you have and justify them in a way that is particular to your line of profession. For me, for instance, it will be human rights, women's rights, girls' rights, access to education. So those are the kind of things that I will talk about. What does the UK stand to gain if they grant you a Chevening scholarship? Go to the British High Commission website in your country again. Look at their diplomatic policies. Read a lot about soft diplomacy. It will help you to be able to answer this question. The next set of questions are going to be about study in the UK. Why do you want to study the course you have chosen? Now you just, it's your course choice. Go to your essay, look at your course choice, and then try to answer the question based on what you have written. Talk about your passion, talk about the impact of the course in your field, talk about the plan that, the fact that you feel that when you come back, you would have gained skills that will help you to become an expert, to contribute to the development process of your country. Why do you want to study in the UK? It's the same thing, but this time around, it's not, you're not just talking about the course. If it is about the university and the course, you focus on the university and the course. But if it's about the UK, talk about the university, the course, but also talk about British culture. Talk about the things that you've wanted to know about the UK experience firsthand. For me, I did talk about Anglo-Saxon education. I wanted to experience it firsthand. No, I also talked about the fact that I wanted to experience British culture, um, British um, touristic sites. I wanted to go to the, see the Big Ben, the London Bridge. Talk about Google places like, you know, touristic attractions around where your university will be and the places where you feel that you want to go. Those are the things that you say. You don't just talk about only your university, but talk about university and also the social aspects of studying in the UK. How will your chosen course help you build a career? It is the same thing. Just explain why you have chosen that course and how it will help you to build your career. Aside from your studies, what else would you do while you're in the UK? I'm just from talking about that. Um, touristic attraction, British culture, um, intercultural learning and education, all those things. Because when you study in the UK, you're going to meet so many international students from different cultures. You can learn from them as well as they can learn from you. So you guys can exchange good practices. How would you handle challenges while living in the UK? Challenges can be in terms of um, cultural shock. It can be in terms of maybe you don't see you know, maybe you are going abroad for the first time and you have to experience a difference in weather, the accent is different, the food is different. You think of how you can cope in those, um, uh, with those challenges. With the weather, you will have to adapt. It's a new experience, but you adapt. With the food, you can decide to immerse yourself into eating British food so that you can also immerse into the culture. With the cultural shock, it will help you to learn. Um, uh, it will help you with intercultural learning and deal, uh, help you to deal with diversity and those kind of things. So those are how you, this is how you answer some of these questions. It is not that deep. Why do you think you are a future leader? Can you share an experience where you have failed as a leader? What lessons did you learn from it? Here you talk about challenges that you've had as a leader, but then talk about how you overcame those challenges and what lessons you have learned from me. That is key from this question. Never say that you have never faced a challenge as a leader. Mm -mm. Don't say that. Next one is how do you plan to use the expertise gained after your studies in the UK to contribute to the development of your country? 
that is um, post um, study plan like when you come back from the UK what do you want to do it is in your essay just repeat what is there but don't cram it and say it word verbatim and finally name a leader you admire and, ex and explain why in this I had this question in my time and I did talk about um, people like um, Lily Harituchi, I talked about um, Dr. Monique Kwacho, they are all Cameroonian, they are Chiviners. I simply said that when I look at their lives before Chivining and after Chivining, there's been a significant improvement. I listed some of the things that they were doing in the community to bring change. And I feel that it is part of the grooming of the Chivining Scholarship. They have ex it has expanded their, their view and their mindset on how life is. So I find that they are doing excellent work and I would want to also be like them. So you can do similar things or you can talk about like really prominent Chivining scholars from your country, from other parts of the world that you admire. You know, you can talk about that. Now, in terms of career plan questions, uh, they might ask you, how will your course choice help you to develop your country after your studies? We've gone through that. What are your immediate plans after your study? It's all in your essay. If we knock on your door in 10 years, where are we likely to find you? That is your long-term plan. So if they ask you like five years, that would be like your um, mid-term plan. Immediate plan is the one they just ask you, what would you do immediately you come back? Then if they say, if we knock on your door 10 years from now, that is definitely your long-term plan. So you just simply go back to your AC and remember what you wrote. Finally, for networking questions, they might ask you, how will your course choice help you promote UK relations in your country? Remember what I said about what does the UK stand to gain from paying your fees and giving you a scholarship? This is all about diplomacy, UK relationship. They are building a network of young leaders or a network of leaders that if they need tomorrow, they are going to be able to access. When you come back and you become a minister, a governor, a president in your country, you already have a good relationship with the UK. So think about that. But to know more details, go to the British High Commission website in your country and see what they are particular about. It will help you to know how you can promote UK relations in your country after your studies. How would you contribute to the Chivening community as an alumni? You can talk about the broader community. Um, if your country has a local chapter, like for us Cameroonians, our Chivening Alumni Association is like off the hook. We do so many projects, community projects. So you can contribute with your expertise. Um, when I used to be back in Cameroon, I was supporting the alumni in terms of project management and all of that. We go to the field, we implement projects. If there's an aspect in my area like women's education, access to sexual and reproductive health, I would volunteer to, you know, lead that part of the process, contribute, be there, support the team. Those who are medical doctors, when we have our mobile clinic projects and all of that, they would volunteer. And I saw Chivining doctors in Cameroon performing surgery in remote communities. I remember in one occasion, the lights even went off. You know, those kind of things. So guys, that was it for today's um, video. I hope that you did enjoy the video. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to subscribe, to like, share, comment, especially if these are the kind of videos that you would love to see on this channel. Until we meet again, don't forget to create an impact. Bye.